We're PRBO Conservation Science, which was founded as Point Reyes Bird Observatory in 1965. We've been working out here on the Fairlawns, and it provides a unique opportunity to do pure science, scientific research, but also be able to help use our research to aid in the management of the refuge and to help inform ocean conservation. My name is Russell Bradley, and I am the Fairlawn Program Manager for PRBO Conservation Science. Our work out here is year-round, uh, every day, 365 days a year, focusing on many different research questions with many different species. It's allowed us to put together some really long-term time series that last several decades. Uh, and that's really crucial in answering some of these bigger picture questions about what are the changes that are occurring in local systems and how is that going to affect wildlife populations. And it's not easy. It's difficult to collect. It's, it's tedious. It's hard work. But it's necessary to be able to address these difficult questions that, that we all want answered. Even though we're only 27 miles from San Francisco, we are in the Pacific Ocean. This spring, we had some days where it was blowing 50 knots at night. In 50 knots, you can barely stand up outside. When you're in bed, you feel the whole house shake. And actually, the water in the toilet bowl swishes around the toilet, will flush itself. It's, you know, you'll have waves sometimes in the winter with the huge swells crashing over the middle of Saddle Rock behind me, coming right over the top. It can be very wild and rugged. In the seabird season, there's a lot of life and there's a lot of death. It can be tough to watch you know, sometimes to be able to see just how rugged and, uh, and wild it is. For us who get to work out here, to get to experience this kind of environment and, and, and do research in, in, in this place, it's an amazing experience. For some other people who wouldn't necessarily enjoy having poop on their jacket or being harassed by, by gulls, uh, it wouldn't be an enjoyable experience. So it definitely takes a certain kind of person to, to function well out here. Band number 875-88965. And we work six weeks on, two weeks off while we're in the field. I'm only here for part of the year, so we have time off. We have boats that come every couple weeks, so there's, there's some opportunity to sort of get out and, uh, and uh, decompress. We're standing in front of the original Lighthouse Keeper's house uh, on the Farallon Islands, on Southeast Farallon Island. It was built in the uh, 1870s. There's great old photos from the late 1800s of families in full, uh, you know, full suits and bowler hats standing in front of this house right here when, they, when the, the lighthouse keepers and their families manned the island. And uh, we, still, we still live here and have been here uh, for over 40 years, uh, 365 days a year. The outside of the house has been redone, but uh, you can see there's still little bits and pieces of it that uh, get uh, blown around uh, by the wind and a fair amount of bird poop and such, but uh, it's pretty so solid and, and sturdy and, and holds up through all the weather, so it's a, it's a nice thing to have out here. <laughs> because mostly with our cooperation with the, with the Farallon National Wildlife Refuge, the fact that we have a station running year-round out here continuously and we have infrastructure from the past, uh, allows us to function quite well. We live in the original lighthouse keepers' houses. We collect all our own water during uh, the uh, winter, which goes through a, a, a series of purification processes, so it's as clean as the water in the city without being chlorinated. We collect almost, uh, well, over 90% of our power usage from solar, from a, a, a solar panel system here, and it, it makes us relatively self-sufficient. We have boats with a volunteer organization uh, that, uh, that come out uh, once every two weeks to, uh, to bring food and, and supplies back and forth to the island. So we have uh, better communication now, so we're connected to the internet. And then if we were out in a tent, it would be a lot, it would be a lot more difficult. I, I say that to people a lot when it's blowing 45 knots out here. Just, just be glad you're not in a tent with your whisper light stove because it would be, it would be difficult to function. It's incredible to sit on these steps right here and be able to look out and see humpback whales and blue whales in your front yard. And that's the best view in the city of San Francisco. 
I've seen a gray whale fluke with its tail reflected in the rising moon that sort of came across. Uh, when you see the island when the, uh, the castle's offlets are in at night and they're calling so loud that the sound is harmonic and it's bouncing off all the rocks and you're just surrounded by this cacophony of sound. To, to see a great white shark attack from, you know, five feet away uh, is, 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 is pretty awe-inspiring. I've been here for nine years and it's just every time you start to get tired of it, you go up to the lighthouse and you see that view and you just take it all in and it's, it's, it's just like the first day.